Hey folks, welcome back to the channel with me, astrophysics master student Thomas Rintoul. In this video, we are going to be exploring my master's project, giving you an introduction to it. This is my first big research project as a, as a scientist, and I get a grade on it at the end of it. This is a really big part of my final year. I've been so excited to share this project with you, and I'm so glad we're finally getting to it. But before we crack on with that, could you do me a massive favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon below this video so you don't miss any future ones? Thanks. Let's get started. Before I talk about the project, a quick primer on my degree. I am in the final year of my integrated masters in astrophysics at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. Let's break that down. First final year, that is pretty simple. I'm in my last year of my degree. In fact, I'm in my final semester. So come hell or high water, I am graduating on the 12th of June. Astrophysics. I like space. I don't really like friction, which is why I went into astronomy and now I'm doing dynamical friction stuff, which is mildly funny to me, but I'm enjoying it now. So it's fine. I do space. I do physics. That's kind of the whole thing. Integrated Masters. This is a particular type of degree that has become common in Scotland and in the rest of the UK in recent years. Essentially, it's a way of compressing a normal Bachelor's of Science degree and a master's degree into one thing. You don't graduate at the end of your BSc years, you just continue on and do another year and do the masters. Essentially what that means is you probably won't do a bachelor's project, you'll do extra more advanced modules so that you can get on to doing your master's project at the end of your fifth year in Scotland, fourth year in the rest of the UK. We have an extra foundation year at the start in Scotland because we have an entirely different education system that I probably should make a video on at some point but I digress. Essentially, the project is larger and it takes up more time in your final year and you don't have a BSc. This is all but exclusive to the sciences. I don't think I've ever heard of an integrated master's degree in the arts, but I may be wrong. Don't quote me on that. So what does this mean for my project? Well, were I doing a BSc, my project would be much smaller. It would only be about half of a semester. It would be the equivalent of two normal modules. This would have happened last year when I was in my fourth year or third year in the rest of the UK. For my MPhys project, my master's project, it's a 60 credit project taking up half of my final year, so the entire last semester. I've heard of some places doing it over say the whole year and it's half of each semester, but the School of Physics at St Andrews just does it in the final semester. What that means is I have no exams this semester, I'm done with all of them, all I have at the end is the assessment for the project, which means they assess my write-up and they have a viva, an oral exam at the end. This series of videos, which I am admittedly a bit late starting, I'm about halfway through the project at the minute, this will be an insight into what I'm doing in the project. I'll go over what I've done, where I see this project going, what I'm learning, what I'm finding out, what I'm doing, what I'm having trouble with. This is my first go at real independent scientific research and I'm really excited about it, I'm really enjoying it and I've I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. I hope you're excited about it as well. All right, enough preamble. Let's get on to the meat of the video. What is my project? Well, my project title is Modeling Accretion in Multiple Systems, but what does that mean? Firstly, I'm studying accretion. This is a process that lets mass flow onto a star, letting it increase in its mass, while transferring most of the angular momentum out further out into an accretion disk. This all happens because of the gravitational interactions between different particles in the disk. I explained it more in my last video, which is a good primer, so go check that out, it'll be in the top right hand corner. Because this process is quite fast on astronomical scales, you'd think that maybe you could study it, maybe observationally, but no, fast on astronomical scales means like less than 100,000 years. So this, this process is still taking thousands and thousands of years, so we can't really study it observationally. We can take snapshots of systems that are accreting, but that's about it. So how am I studying this? Well that's where the modelling comes in. And no, it's not walking down a catwalk. Modelling in this sense is simulations, running computer simulations of the system to explore what should be happening based on the laws of physics that we already understand. I'm simulating this in a very large scale fluids code called Phantom, but I'm going to explain that in a future video in this series, so make sure you get subscribed for that. The system that I'm modelling is a forming stellar multiple system. Now, multiple systems are just star systems that have more than one star in them. This could be the binary system with two stars, but in this case it's a triple system, so three stars. 
Though, if truth be told, I, I do much prefer the much more science fiction name for these systems, which is Trinary Systems. It just sounds better, but again, I digress and it's going to say Triple System in my write-up, sadly. Some work has been done to explore accretion in these systems. I came up with this project myself, along with my supervisor, but it was actually inspired by a paper that came out last summer, published in the Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society by SEPI and collaborators. The link to this paper will be in the description down below. Also, I may be murdering the pronunciation of that surname, sorry. What they looked at in their paper was the effect of the separation of the stars in the hierarchical triple system. Hierarchical just means that we've got like a wide binary with a, a tight binary inside it. So that's what I mean when I say that. They were looking at the separations of those stars. So the separation between your tight binary and your single star, and also the separation between your uh, tight binary as well. Looking at the effect that had on the accretion rates of the system. What happens when you move them closer together or move them further apart? They found that in general, increasing the separation of that tight inner binary generally increased the accretion rates of those stars and of the system as a whole. What it did was it made the sort of cross section of the system larger so it could scoop up more gas. So what makes my project different from that work that's already been done? Well my project is similar to that paper in several ways. I'm even using the same like setup script and the same large scale code that they used. My investigation is looking at different parameters. It's looking at mass ratios. Now this was something that Seppi and collaborators touched on a little bit in their paper. They looked at different wide mass ratios, so the difference between the single star and the tight binary. What was the ratio between those masses? I'm looking a little bit deeper and exploring the effect of the mass ratio of the two stars. What happens if one of them is much larger than the other? That's what I'm looking into. I'm also going to look a bit deeper into the results generated by the code, and I'm going to also be exploring the accretion of angular momentum as well. This all happens because of the same process, it's just how much angular momentum makes it onto those stars, because most of it's going to be transferred out, but does it change? I don't know, let's find out. The angular momentum accretion question is something that just wasn't covered at all in the SEPI paper. So, where am I at the minute? Right now I'm about halfway through my project semester. I'm ready to get stuck into my data analysis. Earlier in the semester, I reproduced the results from the SEPI paper to give me a point of comparison because my code is never going to run exactly the same as theirs. It's going to be very similar, but we may have slight differences in how we've been setting it up. So I've reproduced that to a reasonable amount of accuracy. This gives me a direct point of comparison for my results with those settings versus my results with the settings I'm changing for, for my project. This took a while. We discovered some interesting behaviour, which I thought was a bug, but actually it's a feature of the physics. I'm going to need to explore that later at some point. We'll see. I've then been running some initial tests with my code to give me some initial data to start playing around with and start developing some data analysis techniques. So as of today, which is right at the end of my mid-semester break, I've just downloaded all my production data. So when I say production data, this means that I set about 30 different simulations running on the cluster about two weeks ago before I had PhD interviews and the break. So I've now got all of that data back again, just about, and I'm now able to explore it. I've got all of that stuff downloaded onto my laptop and I'm going to be spending some time with some trains in the next couple of days. Um, so I'm going to be working on all of that. We're heading into the back end of the semester now. The time for running simulations is essentially over. This is where the real hard work begins. If I'm going to have any chance of finishing on time, I've really got to crack on with this data analysis. So hopefully this literal introduction to my project has got you excited about this brand new research that I'm doing. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the simulations that I've been running, how they work, the sort of code that I'm using, as well as some of the provisional results that I've found, and well, what's the point of all this? Am I just doing this for the hell of it, or is there something actually useful that will come out of it? If you're looking for something else to watch, then I would really recommend that you go and check out my explainer on accretion and on angular momentum. It's a really good primer for this project, and really, I'm quite proud of that video. So go watch that, it'll be on your screen at the minute. All that I have left to say now is thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.